Well, uh, this is a very challenging concept uh, for the students who are preparing for IITJ. This concept is about the charge redistribution on a parallel plate capacitor that has unequal initial charges on its plates. So far, the simplest version is what you have been dealing with, right? Let me take the a simple parallel plate capacitor. Now, once the capacitor gets fully charged, so you know a plus Q amount of charge will be here, a minus Q amount of charge will be there. That means on a positive plate, we'll have an internal phase with a uniform charge distribution of positive charges. Similarly, the negative, the internal phase of the negative plate will have a uniform charge distribution of uh, negative charges. Overall, whatever charge plus Q is here, the same value, same magnitude minus Q will be on the negative plate, right? So let's name these plates as X and Y, right? So this is what happens in simple cases, right? Now, if you have any doubts regarding uh, how a capacitor gets its charge distribu redistribution and all, and what is the, uh, the field inside the capacitor and all, if you have any doubts regarding the Gauss law, how the Gauss law is applied to find the field inside a capacitor, let me know in the comments and I will make a demonstration on that. Okay. But in here, my question is a little different. Okay. And this is the challenge. And we will learn how to mitigate the challenge here. Right. So <coughs> imagine that I have again a parallel plate capacitor like this. Right. And what I'm doing is it's initially uncharged. And I'm giving it a plus charge. Uh, I'm giving a Q1 amount of charge here and a Q2 amount of charge here. Q1 goes to plate X, Q2 goes to plate Y. How will the charges be redistributed in the final stage? Well, the charges will redistribute, right? Why? Because actually this plate has got some volume inside it. It's just like the Y plate, right? And since both these plates are made out of metal, right? Both these plates are, are, are made out of metal, the field at any internal point, the field, let's suppose this point is P, this point is R, the field at EP will be equal to ER and that will be zero because the electric field inside a metal in a steady state will always be zero. But since we have a Q1 charge, imagine if Q1 charge is redistributed over the left surface of P and there is no charge on the right surface R because positive charges, let's suppose Q1 and Q2 are both positive, right? Imagine, we are assuming Q1 and Q2 are both, po both positive. In this case, uh, they will be repelling each other. So on the left side of Y also no charge and on the right side of Y, all the positive charges are built up, right? So, and we know for a uniform charge distribution on a plane surface charge distribution, which is uniform, and if it's approximated to be an infinitely large surface with a ch uniform charge density sigma, we know that the field that it creates on both sides is, does have a magnitude sigma upon 2 epsilon naught if the, per, if the medium is space or air, correct? Now, since there is a Q1 amount of charge here, that, that, that means here there will be sigma. Okay, let's take the plate area A only. If we take the plate area A, that means it's a definite uh, surface with certain area and we are giving Q1. So basically sigma 1 here will be Q1 by A and sigma, uh, let's suppose sigma X and sigma Y will be uh, Q2 by A. Of course, the electric field at P on one side, the electric field is something and because of the charge on the Y plate also, there is another field here. So let's suppose this is uh, E due to X and this is E due to Y. And since Q1, if Q1 is not equal to Q2, that means E1 or EX will not be equal to EY. Oh, well, this is capital Y actually, right? Well, that means there will be E net at P which will not be equal to zero and the same thing E net at R. See, 
this is not how it is going to be in the steady state in the steady state at p will be equal to e r and that will be equal to 0 that's the steady state so how do we find the charge distribution so that this condition of steady state condition will be stat satisfied it's very easy actually try to think of uh, think of these plates once again like this right let me draw these two plates like this a little bit larger this time the two plates I'm drawing like this okay first of all I gave Q1 charge here and Q2 charge here right but imagine that X charge comes to the right surface so on left surface there is Q1 minus X charge left the area is still A, the area is still A, name the plates as X and Y. Right? Again, on the left surface and the right surface for Y, let's suppose there is Y charge. So, what remains on the right surface of Y is Q2 minus Y. Right? So, now understand, if I take a point here, let's call it point, P, let's call this point P and let, let's call this point as, uh, let's call this point N. Okay, because we are naming left and right as L, L, L and R. So, let's name the points as P and N. So, on P, at the point P, what, how many fields are there? Because of the charge distribution here, because of the charge distribution on the left surface, this will have a field like this. Let's call it E, X, L. Similarly, for the charge distribution on this surface, uh, electric field will be in this direction. Let's call it E, E, X, R. Correct? Now, also for P, the charge distribution on the left surface of Y will also be there. And assuming that is also positively charged, so basically there will be a field in this direction also. That will be E, Y, L. And for the charge distribution on this surface also, this is not negative, okay? These are, I'm simply demonstrating the charge distribution, okay? Whatever the charge distribution happens because of this, there will, because of this charge distribution also, there will be a field like this. Let's call it E, Y, R. <coughs> so all these four fields exist at P, the sum has to be zero. So how will the charge distribution take place? Let's understand. So basically, we need to understand that the total rightward field will be will be the same as the total leftward fields taken together. Simple. So let's find out what is E. That means let us write down first. What is the this one? This is E X L will be equal to E. The first one E X R plus E Y L plus E Y R right that means okay what is E X L it's simply uh, basically the electric field due to a play surface charge distribution is sigma upon 2 epsilon naught but sigma is also defined we are approximating we are basically what we are doing for an infinite uh, plane surface right for an infinite uh, plane surface we know that the field is given like this. If a surface uniform charge distribution sigma exists, but this is a finite plate. So what we are doing here, we are essentially ignoring the end. We are essentially ignoring the edge effects, right? Although this is a finite plate, but we are idealizing the situation by ignoring the end effects. If you ignore the edge edges of these plates, basically what you are getting is a uh, is a field that is given by the same formula that we obtained for uh, plane uniform surface charge distribution infinitely large right so although actually this is uh, this this formula is not quite as it is applicable for parallel plate capacitors of course just be because the formula is for infinitely large surface and for a parallel plate capacitor the plate is finite so end effects or edge effects will be there but theoretically we can basically have an approximated value which will be very close to the real real value okay otherwise it will be so much complicated and will will involve a lot of complications and you need, need to also find uh, the exact shape of the edges and all although that is derivable but let's not get into that in this demonstration 
okay now let's find out since e is sigma by 2 epsilon naught and sigma is nothing but q by a whatever the charge is divided by the area so it will simply be the whatever the charge is divided by 2 epsilon naught into area right so exl will be what is the charge q1 minus x by 2 epsilon naught area equals to exr which is again x here the x charge is there so 2 epsilon naught into area plus for y it is again yl this one is y charge so y by 2 epsilon naught area plus for this charge that is q2 minus y so it's going to be q2 minus y by 2 epsilon naught area so that's it all you have to do is to simplify this see 2 epsilon naught area or a is common so let's cancel that from both sides what i have is q1 minus x is x plus y plus q2 minus y that means plus y minus y cancels so if i take minus x to this side and bring q2 to this side and then flip this equation all i have is 2x equals to q1 minus q2 that means x will be q1 minus q2 by 2 yes now we can also find this do the same thing for y right so basically let's draw that again the two plates right let's name this x this is y this is left side right side left side right side here there is q1 minus x here there is x here there is y there is q2 minus y the areas are both a and a now for the point n here what are the fields firstly the one field will be because of the because of the charge distribution on the left surface let's call it e y l for the right hand side there will be field like this towards it that is e y r now again because of this charge distribution right here one field exists that is e x r again for this charge distribution here there is a rightward field called e x l so all we need to do is to basically equate all the right right hand side fields to the left hand side fields in magnitude okay so let's do that <coughs> right so what we have for the right hand side first of all we will have e x l plus e x r plus e y l will be e y r right now put in the values so q1 q1 minus x by 2 epsilon naught a plus x by 2 epsilon naught a plus this is y by 2 epsilon naught a which is q2 minus y by 2 epsilon naught a thus again cancelling 2 epsilon naught a from both sides and across all terms we have q1 minus x plus x plus y equals to q2 minus y so minus x plus x cancels so this is plus y so i bring the minus y to the left hand side and this becomes this becomes 2y will be that is q2 already on the right hand side and I bring q1 to the right hand side that minus q1 that is negative of q1 minus q2 and if i want to find y that will be negative of q1 minus q2 by 2 you see the value of y now has been found can you compare that with the values of x so we can conclude that y will be negative of x which is negative of q1 minus q2 by 2 this is the formula now let's see if can we derive uh, the condition where if i have a parallel plate capacitor basically if i have a parallel plate capacitor like this and uh, if i if that is not charged at all and i'm connecting that with a battery to charge it 
right so the battery is going to supply a charge plus q to this side and a charge minus q to this plate x gets plus q y gets minus q right that is left that is right that is left that is right so technically speaking as we know that that positive charge as a whole will be attracted towards the negative charge a negative charge will be attracted to, towards the positive charge since they cannot move inside this air or dielectric all of the positive charge will be concentrated in inner surface and all of the negative charge will be also concentrated or uniformly distributed over the negative surface or in the inside surface correct so all positive charge plus q will be distributed over the right surface of the plate x and all of the negative charge will be uniformly distributed over the left surface of the y plate that's all right so basically technically speaking what should we have we should have x as plus q and y as minus q right yes or no can we put that there yes of course so let's sound fi find x is here q1 is plus q right or and q2 will be minus q so x is q1 minus q2 by 2 that is plus q minus minus q by 2 which is 2 q plus q by 2 which is q and y is minus x right and that is minus q got it so we found so make sure that you understand how this formula is derived do a practice of your own derivation if you have any doubt you can go on to the link to ask your doubts that i put in the description see you in the next demo bye bye